Hi guys and welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade. My name's Hayley for anyone that's new and this is what we eat in a week. So we've got stuffed mushroom with stuffed with crab, baby potatoes and rabbit food. There's a recipe already up for the stuffed mushrooms if anybody's interested I will link it below. Pucker pie, that's Steve. I don't like pucker pies. Homemade chips and mushy peas. Easy night. It was a busy week this week actually. I think there was a few easy nights. Oh, yeah, this was the uh, all-in-one rice dish that I made. The video for that is already out as well. If anybody would like that and you've missed it. Got a little bit of a kick to it. Not much. Oh, one of my favourites. Jacket potatoes loaded with cheese and then fish and butter sauce on top of that. Num num. Not for everybody, but my favourite. One of my favourites. Panini night. These are Steve's paninis because he has um, tomatoes and rubbish in his. <laughs> so yeah, it was panini night this night. That was the night the girls were at um, Girls Brigade. So, I'm putting in some smoked haddock. This is fish pie. And I'm putting in salmon. Two bags of, one bag of each, sorry. There was four pieces in each bag. What I'm gonna do is just simmer them in the milk and water mixture. Whilst I sort out these two heads of cauliflower. I've cut them really, really small. And these go inside the fish pie. And I do both heads of uh, cauliflower because it's a large fish pie I'm going to make. You can see I've um, just lightly got it on barely a simmer here. I don't want the fish in pieces, I want to keep them whole. I'm just doing that until they're, I would say, 75% cooked. Now I'm going to take them out. And I highly advise that when you take your fish out and your broccoli, you'd let them drain for a good 10 minutes. Otherwise, when you come to build your fish pie, it makes your sauce watery when it's cooking in the oven. I'm just taking them out and then I'll let them stand on that, on that sieve for a good 10 minutes. And don't discard the milky water because it's um, it's now smoky from that smoked haddock. It's all good flavour. This is the first time I've used salmon in mine. I don't usually. I usually use a white fish, a smoked fish and prawns. And the kids ate the salmon, which I was surprised about. I don't know if it's because it had the sauce all over it or not. Because they've tried like the salmon fish fingers they get at school and they don't like them. But they ate it. Just making sure I've got everything. You can see at the bottom of that bowl there, it's already draining the milk off them. So what I'm going to do is separate that milk out. Use the same pan again. It is pointless to go and use a different one to make the roux for the sauce. I don't weigh anything. So I throw in some butter, margarine, whichever one you want. Then I'm going to throw in some cream cheese, big spoonful, then a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'm not a fan of mustard, but Dijon I don't mind in food. And just melt that down before you add your flour. And you're going to add your flour and cook it off for a couple of minutes. I want this to clump up. And that's more of a paste and I want it more clumpy so I add some more flour. No it won't, that was my second, it's cut out the first bit. So that was my second batch of flour that I popped in. <laughs> because it was a paste and that's how I wanted it like that. 
So hot milk is going back in. Your sauce will not become lumpy. Trust me. It'll all smooth itself out after you've chucked it all over the place. <laughs> so stir it until it's all mixed in, then add more. nice and smooth and I do use all this milk so once I've incorporated all the milk I'm going to add what cheeses I've got in the fridge so there was a bit of mozzarella left so I use that stringy mozzarella it does completely melt it doesn't stay like that Some garlic. And parsley. I did add a load of uh, cheddar. There was mozzarella and cheddar added to this. Now I wanted this just a touch thicker. So all I did was put a heaping tablespoon of flour into a cup. I did a drop of water. Mixed it to a paste and then slowly poured it in and it thickened it right up. Just now taking the fish off the skin. And I just do that with all the pieces. The smoked fish is a lot easier to take off the skin than that salmon was. It was a pain in the bum. So you do, just take it all off, spread it around evenly. You'll see with this salmon, it doesn't come off as easy off the skin. Hehehe. <laughs> can't say I was uh, overly impressed with the skin on the salmon. <laughs> it was all stuck to me. I was getting all licked out. There, it's all done. Now I'm just adding my um, shrimp to it. These are fully cooked. I've, all I've done is take the tails off them. Just double checking. So I defrosted them, took the tails off. If my kids come across a tail, then that's it. They'll never eat one again. So as you can see, there's a good amount of fish in this bowl now. And this fed seven. Don't cook your broccoli all the way through, guys, because it's going to go in the oven at a later date, once you've added the potatoes. Unless you like it mushy, then it's up to you. There's your cheddar sauce, your smoky cheddar sauce. Put a good amount in there. Because when you mash, when it's in the oven, your mashed potato does absorb some of that sauce. So make sure you put a good amount in. Now 
and I always keep some to the side in a little gravy boat. That's what I'm doing with that now. In case people want a bit extra. Because we do like to dip bread in stuff here. And there's your, the base of your fish pie. Flavour, flavour, flavour. All I'm going to add to that now is some mashed potatoes. You can see there how much sauce I saved. <laughs> it's not me doing the potatoes, it's Steve. Depending, I can't tell you how many potatoes to use because I've used a big lasagna dish. So I need quite a few. You might make a smaller version of it so you won't need as many. So you decide how many you're going to need. He uses a peeling normally. I bet he couldn't be bothered to look for it. Never seen him using a knife. It's always a peeler. And that's the amount he did. All you do is boil them down for mashed potatoes. Don't do your mashed potatoes too loose. Um, I find that it's, it works better on a fish pie if it's a little bit firmer. I actually forgot to take a picture of it once it was cooked and all. It was just a crispy cheese topping basically on top. Spread this out and then I put some grated cheese on top. Cook it until it's piping hot and bubbling. The cheese is all crispy. Happy days. You see why I had to do so many potatoes, well, why Steve did so many potatoes. It's a big dish. There you go. So I'm doing some steamed syrup puddings. And I've done them in my uh, multi-cooker because both of these dishes fit in at the same time. So I wanted to try this recipe out. What I didn't want was a heavy steamed pudding. So I haven't gone for a suet based one. I've gone for a regular sponge based one. And these two steamed in the uh, multi cooker for about an hour and a half. And they were lovely and light. If anyone does enjoy steamed puddings, but doesn't like them heavy and would like this recipe, just let me know. And I will pop it down below. So I just creamed all them together. It's a very, very easy recipe. 
And then the flour and the three eggs, I'm just going to alternate as I add them. So I started this off with my spoon because starting it off with a whisk, you just end up with the butter and everything's trapped in the whisk and it takes longer. So, yeah. All I had to do with the multi cooker that I've got when it's on the steam function is every 30 minutes just check the water level and add some when it's needed. Pop the lid back on and you're away. And it was great because I, they was cooked and I took them out. Then I put the vegetables in that we had with our fish pie to steam. And then it took about nine minutes. I was really shocked. And then while I was dishing up and we ate tea, these were back in the steamer on a keep warm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good multi cooker. I'm glad I've got it. So thank you to Steve for that. So it was three eggs and 175 grams of flour. So I figured the easiest way to do it was 100 grams first off with the eggs. Mix it, add the rest of the eggs, and then 75 grams the second time around. Oh, it's like Flash Gordon there. <laughs> oh, well, it's a little bit over, but who cares? It worked out fine. So I could have used one large basin, but I didn't want to. <laughs> and these fit perfectly, so I just used two of them. Four tablespoons, apparently, <laughs> of milk. So the syrup at the bottom, a bit of parchment, and I've sprayed around the dishes. So I'm just going to evenly spread it between the two. It was a perfect amount. sure what size dishes these are if they're one pinters or not I'd have to measure it and I've got four the same size and one smaller maybe these are two two pinters oh, well I don't know I'd have to measure it so for the ones that went ahead and bought that multi cooker just know that this is a super easy way to do a steamed pudding in it not just steaming vegetables these go in and you've literally all you've got to do is just top up the water like you would if you did it in a pan so so easy i was really pleased with the way these come out so i'm just going to put a plate in it spray the top so that the pudding doesn't stick to it And I just use some butcher's twine to tie it up. They do recommend you double layer the top, some grease proof then foil. But I've never done that, I've just used foil and it's always been fine. But by all means, if you want to double yours up, go ahead.
So there's everything waiting to go into the oven. So there they are, both are steaming away nicely. Perfect fit. So there it was, crispy on top. This is obviously me filming because, yeah. <laughs> you can always tell when it's me because it's like right in your face. I'm trying to show you the fish in that inside it. The chunks of fish. And those were the puddings when they come out. And I just ran a knife around the edge and they plop straight out onto a plate. Happy days. So if you want the recipe for the pudding, just let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Chat to me down in the comments and I'll see you on Wednesday. Haul on Wednesday, guys. Bye.